If you guys have been watching my videos, you would have seen me using the Samsung T5 external SSD to store all of my footage and other large files. If you watched my video on if the 256 gigabyte SSD version of the new M1 Max is enough, you would know that I personally don't think spending money on the internal storage on the Mac is worth it, unless of course you think you're going to be using it, and in that case, go for it. But for everyone else, it's gonna be much, much cheaper if you simply just buy an internal storage option that is enough for all of your apps and files you want on the computer, and then all of your larger files, put it on an external drive. Now the T5 SSD is what I personally use to edit all of my 4K footage, store said footage, and store other large files like photos, Photoshop templates, and other spare footage that I'm not using. Now the T5 SSD is relatively inexpensive and it is a Samsung, so Samsung is a pretty good brand when it comes to storage. I've never had any issues with all the Samsung drives I've used over the past, but if you guys aren't keen on Samsung, pretty much any SSD out there is gonna give you a good bang for your buck these days. Because the good thing about an SSD or a solid state drive is the read and write speeds are very fast. So you can get up to about 500 megabytes per second. Now, if you are someone who's doing a lot of 4K or 6K or 8K editing and you need something a bit quicker, I can also recommend the Samsung T7 drive, which is essentially just a little bit of a faster version than the T5. By the way, I'll link both of these products in the description below. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and I'll give you a little bit more of a look into the T5. All right, so let's get into some benchmarks first. And we'll open up this disk speed test tool from Blackmagic, which is very handy. And what we'll do first of all is we'll do a test on the internal SSD that the Mac comes with. So as you can see there, it's very, very quick, over 2000 megabytes per second. The read is a little bit quicker. And you can see down here, that is suitable for all kinds of footage. So absolutely no issues there. If we stop that and if we come into the T5 SSD, you'll see that this is obviously nowhere near as quick as the internal SSD, but you're still getting a pretty respectable 380 megabytes per second write. And then the read is gonna be about the same at about 385. But again, you can see here that that's gonna be suitable for pretty much any footage or file. So unless you're doing some kind of 4K 60 frames per second cinema raw file or a super high quality 10 bit file, you're gonna be able to edit off this hard drive with pretty much any footage. And you can see some more statistics over here. So absolutely no issues there with all of those codecs. And we might just stop that as well. So as you can see there guys, it's very, very, very quick. Now if we shut that down and we do more of a real life test. So let's come here to the T5. And this is a video I did the other day, and this is 11.2 gigabytes in size. So let's actually drag this onto the SSD, and we'll see how long it takes. So as you can see there, it's gonna do that 11.2 gigabyte transfer in about 20 seconds. So that's moving very, very quick. And of course, if you were to transfer this file off the drive onto the Mac, it'll be just as quick as well. So absolutely no issues there, and it's gonna be a lot faster than a hard drive. For comparison, most hard drives are about 80 megabytes per second. If you have the USB 3 versions, if it's a USB 2.0 version, it's gonna be even slower. Now what I like about this drive is it is quite rugged, even though it may not look like it. It's got a metal exterior, and it's very, very small and slim, so it fits almost anywhere. And what I'm actually planning to do is Velcroing this to the back of my 4K monitor, plugging it into the monitor, and then using a USB-C cable from the monitor to plug into my MacBook, which will then do everything for me, and means I only have to have one cable plugged into my laptop. On my Mac Mini setup, this will just go directly into the back, and it will essentially just act as a storage option sitting on my desk. The other thing is this particular drive is great for travel. I've just recently come back from a two week interstate trip and this little drive fits anywhere and it's very, very portable, which is great for people who want to edit or take their files on the go. Now my particular model is a one terabyte model. However, if you can afford it, definitely go for the two terabyte model because you never know how much storage you're gonna need in the next 12 to 24 months. It might be more than one terabyte. 
I want to also mention that I'm going to be buying and testing additional drives in the near future, including the T7 and also an NVMe drive that I can just plug into an adapter and that will go straight into the Thunderbolt port on the Mac Mini. So very excited to keep testing all the other external drives out there. But as of right now, the Samsung T5 is absolutely the best in my opinion. Or the T7 for those of you that need a little bit of a higher read and write speed. Anyway, that's it for this video guys. Hope you enjoyed. Again, links will be in the description. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below because I try to respond to all of them. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.